Welcome everybody to today's uh, webinar here and we're going to be talking about making dashlets for Sugar 7 um, in a multi-part series but in this first part we're going to be looking at a very very simple example of making dashlets that's called an iframe dashlet and all that really means is we're going to take the contents um, of another web page and be able to expose it um, in through the Sugar interface as an iframe. But before we dig into that let's look a little bit of actually what a dashlet is. A dashlet is really a simple put. It's just a container view that can be embedded um, inside a dashboard or a list or a record view. So this gives us a, a view of data which is contained from the rest of the data um, of the rest of the rest of the page um, and providing that insightful view of that data um, that might pertain, might pertain to what the, the user is wanting to look at or perhaps looking at the list or record um, that they're actually looking at. The idea of a dashlet is it's applying secondary data. Um, so this is data that's meant to kind of um, help the user along the way and give them a better insight and idea of what they're trying to, to accomplish or giving that extra data to give them that extra context of what they're actually looking at um, as a part of the record. Now we've had the concept of dashlets before, and this, if you recall, this was in Sugar 6 where there was actually a dashboard where you could actually see all of these um, items. But we've transitioned this and we've really made these a lot more dynamic in a lot of different ways. First thing is they can live in more places. So in Sugar 6, you only had the idea, you only had the concept of being able to put dashlets um, on the dashboard or homepage. Um, and so these were designed to have a very big overview look and a first glance look at everything on your CRM system. Now we've extended this same concept and you can look at it in two in different places, such as the record view, where you can have a dashlet which pertains specifically to the record you're looking at. It has maybe and has data um, as a part of it. And you can also look at it in the list view, where it can have a, a view of data um, across a number of records that you might have be selected um, at any one time or viewing at any one time. And what really empowers the record view and list view um, abilities of the dashlet is you can have a sense of context. So each of the dashlets, as opposed to just having generic data about the system in different places, you can actually get very contextual and have the data in the dashlet reflect the data that you're currently looking at. The construction of these dashlets um, now are using um, modern technology such as handlebars, templates, and JavaScript. And this is in comparison to the Sugar 6 days um, when we were using PHP and Smarty templates to construct them. And as a result, they're much easier to build, as we'll see from today's examples. So the core components of a dashlet in Sugar 7 are really three major pieces. One is a metadata file, and this really just defines the properties of a dashlet, such as the title, the configuration options, um, and the various other properties that go along with it. Then the real guts of the dashlet are the controller, and this is really what handles the back-end business logic of how you would interact um, with the data and how the data is to come in and be presented out to the user. And the actual view of what the data looks like to the user, this is controlled in a handlebars template. And you can have multiples of these, um, a primary one for the dashlet, and you can also define one for the configuration of a dashlet as well, if, if there's a situation where you have specific um, configuration options that you need to expose. Dashlets can live in a number of different places, and it really depends upon the type of dashlet you have. If you have an application dashlet, these would live in the clients or custom clients directory um, under the particular type of um, dashlet view that they would be um, a part of. If you have something that's a very module specific dashlet, these would live under the modules or custom modules directory. So this gives a way to um, help encapsulate a dashlet. If it's very specific to a module, you can put it in that modules directory. But if it's something that multiple modules can use, the application level um, is the more appropriate option. And with dashlets, there's a couple of different options. And today we're going to be looking at the easiest to get going with, which is an iframe dashlet. And like I said, this renders content entirely from a new, another location um, and places it inside the Sugar application. In the future, we're going to be built looking at a few examples of how to actually build a natively rendered dashlet. Um, which takes advantage of the various UX components that Sugar provides, um, along with much more leverage of the sidecar framework. And we'll look at this at a future webinar. So let's look at a few, two examples here of iframe dashlets. 
The first one is our box for Sugar CRM Dashlet. And this is a really simple dashboard. If you remember, we've had a box integration um, for a number of um, releases in the, six, in the Sugar 6 cycle. And really the, the, the guts of this are an HTML, HTML5 widget that Box provides um, that we render in the form of a dashlet. And so we're transitioning this and putting it into the product here um, as an HTML5 widget that's exposed into an iframe. Now this dashlet here is really not gonna have any sorts of context um, so it can work at any view or any module with ease. So let's look at the various pieces here of the Dashlet configuration. And you can see here, um, there's two real major parts here. Um, and then the actual um, piece at the top here that's defining um, what the Dashlet properties are. So you can see here at the very top here, we have this view depths array here, which is a big global array here that defines all the Dashlets in the system here. And the definition is very clear to say that this dashlet is a part of the home module, which is indicated by the very first um, piece of this array. And then the base, which means it's part of the base, you know, um, rendering client. And then, and then it's a view and it pertains to the box dashlet. So this is really important how this goes together of this is where the location of this dashlet actually um, pertains to. In the case of it was an application level dashlet, the home portion would not be there and it would begin right with the base. As you can see, there's two major properties to the dashlet here. Um, one is the dashlet's array, which this is just a set of configuration um, variables here that defines all the various pieces um, that pertain to how the dashlet is exposed in the system. The name, the description of it, some configuration parameters, and here we'll have one for a URL. And then some preview parameters here. So if somebody wants to preview the dashlet before using it, they have some already filled in um, preview pieces. The next part is the view panel. And this defines you know, the, the fields that will be showing actually in the panel, um, which is the main portion of the dashlet. Now for this example here, we're gonna have just basically one single field here, and this is gonna be an iframe field. Um, and we're gonna give the name of this as URL, um, and we'll give a label here. Um, as well. And so we're just saying here that this dashlet um, will have one MIG field to it, and it'll be an iframe, and that will be the entire contents of what will be shown. So now looking at the controller pieces, we're immediately indicating that we're going to be using the dashlet plugin here, which implies that we are defining a dashlet. And with this, we have two methods that we're going to need to define. The first is the render method, and this here is called to render the actual dashlet um, for the, for the user. And here we just have some very simple config pieces in here. The main part in here is indicating that we're gonna have a fixed height for this, for this panel um, in case we don't have any other definition coming in here. And then we're calling up to the parent here to go render this. And then in the init dashlet method, we're simply setting the view name to the passed in view here. Um, very simple um, way to get going here. And the handlebars template is quite simple. Um, as we're kind of inheriting from the initial from the uh, initial dashlet model, we kind of it knows exactly all the pieces in here. And so what we're able to do is simply say, go through the view panel dashlet config and render each of the fields. Since there's only one field in here, an iframe field, it'll just render that field, which is the whole contents of our dashlet. So let's look at another example of a dashlet here, and this is one I've created um, a DuckDuckGo plugin for Sugar CRM. And it's really simple. Um, it just renders the actual DuckDuckGo results page um, in a dashlet. And as the DuckDuckGo website is, um, has a very responsive design to it, it fits really nicely into the dashlet context. Now, since we're actually passing context from the record into here, um, we're specifically going to tweak this so it only works for a certain set of modules so we know exactly what sort of field we can expect. Um, so we're gonna design this only for the accounts, leads, context and prospects um, record view. And so we're also gonna restrict that view. We're only gonna have this for the record view and not the list since we're only gonna have one um, search criteria going in here. And like I said, this will show the results of um, a DuckDuckGo search of the based on the current record. So as you would go through here and you would, you would set with the, the, the name value for a current record, it would immediately go and do the search um, for a Duck, Duck, Go, on the DuckDuckGo um, website. If you would go in the record view and you'd actually do an inline edit and change the value of um, 
the, the name for the account lead contact or prospect that you're on, it would redo that search automatically for you automatically. Um, so let's look at how this one's constructed. So we can see here, it's very, very similar to the box example here, but we've added one additional piece here of this filter configuration option. And this filter configuration option is defining exactly what modules and views that this will work for. So we've said here in the modules, we're we'll only work for accounts, contacts, leads, and prospects, and we're only allowing this to work for the record view. So this means this will not be an option to add on any other view except for this one. The controller also has a couple other properties to it to handle um, not only taking the context of the record, um, but also being able to be responsive to record changes on the fly. So here we've added a piece here to say that we're going to go out and we're going to get the base URL settings um, for the record. And so we, we defined a, a config variable base URL, which has the, the, the URL for DuckDuckGo along with the very first part of the search criteria. And so that we can fill in the last part um, as a part of the, you know, as a part of this rendering call. And we're also defining a search for variable. And this is going to go through here into the model, which is the current record. And it's going to get either the name field, if this is an account record, or the full name field, if it's a contacts, leads, or prospect record. And so the model will be able to check for each one to see which one applies. And then simply, we're just going to set the URL property, which is this is the property um, that is for our field, um, to the space URL which is kind of the, the URL portion plus the stub there for the search um, parameter, and combine that with the actual value we're searching for. And then we're going to render the dashlet. Now, in order to get this dashlet to refresh itself every single time a record's change, we're going to add two, call, we're going to add two um, lines here to the init dashlet function. And this is simply just to say a, adding a, a change event to the name and full name field that any single time a change is made will re-render will re the, the um, entire dashlet for it. And as we can see, the handlebars template, since we still have an iframe um, dashlet, nothing has really changed here. So this is the same one that we had that were on the previous box example. So if you want to learn more about dashlets, we have some really great documentation in the Sugar7 developer guide, and I encourage you to check this out. Um, you can see here the URL of the screen. I have also have the code um, from the DuckDuckGo example in today's webinar up on GitHub, and you can see the URL in my GitHub repository. And if this has intrigued you to start wanting to play with Sugar7 and start to use it and maybe build your own integration to it, email me to learn more at jmertic at sugarserum.com, and I can provide that for you. And I want to thank everybody for coming to today's webinar, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.